Here we are, demonstration of SuperNav and the docking. So this is, is the lone survivor, and I've kind of modified it to have some docks. And this is the base module with the base code running on it. And so let's get that updated. Edit file scripts. There's the workshop version. Copy the editor. Now it's got the link. So that's the current one. And see it's showing the connectors with base, either in the name or the custom data. And I've got two things connected and two connectors available. A total of four connectors. That's all this uh, module does right now. It just has the base. So it's saying what uh, modules are installed and that's also shown here on the screen, base connectors, version 4. So if we look at the connectors, I've set up four connectors here, one, two, three, four, connected to the um, base here. And I've got some ships docked to it, and I tested using AutoDock. And it's controlling also these lights here because they're within, they're close to the uh, docking connector, so it assumes <coughs> that they belong to it. So there's one here, one here, and those are blue, meaning it's currently occupied. There's a white one here, meaning, or sorry, green one here, meaning it's available. And this one doesn't have any lights on it, so it doesn't change. So now I've got a little test ship over here, in addition to those others that I actually have as regular stuff. This is my little test ship. It's got hydrogen, because I wanted to test being out of fuel very quickly. Um, so it's got some tanks in a configuration, like a missile configuration, really, for the thrusters here. Um, it's got four of the small hydrogen tanks in a little block. Um, and then the cockpit, so I can travel along. And this has the super nav module, and see it's saying that it has navigation and space dock both in that. It's got a connector on the bottom. And the other ones actually have the connectors on the back, but the code handles all that. And so now we're going to get into this, and let's look at the space dock here. I've got a command there. Let me copy that, or control that out. So look at the hydrogen. We're at 96, so it's not going to automatically dock. Let's look at the custom data. Uh, and there's some things you can change here. Uh, the main things really are the battery percent. If your batteries get low, it'll automatically go dock. And this would mainly be used if you're using ion thrusters. It would use up a lot of that. And there's also tanks, how high to get the tank when you're docked. And if you get below the low number, then go dock if you need to. For the docking, there's automatically refuel. That defaults to true. So if you get low on fuel, it'll try to dock. Auto relaunch means automatically launch after you dock when you get full, and that's a flag for doing docking. Maybe you shouldn't be there. And the other thing that gets checked is the cargo percent. All right, so if I give it a command, I'm gonna say go dock. It's going to communicate with the bases that are in the area. It finds the nearest one, talks to it, and gets a connector that's available. Make it into third person here so I can see. It's lining up with the connector and that was using the nav, and now it's going to align to the dock. Get close, turn so the connector faces, and then approach. And it will automatically dock, and it will also turn the tanks to stockpile. It'll turn off the thrusters and turn the batteries to seek recharge in sequence. So it'll sequence the batteries um, from 30% to 50 to 80 to 100, I think. So now it's full, but it's not going to relaunch. Uh, uh, because, even though everything's full, because I didn't turn on the relaunch. So if we go to space dock here, and we say relaunch, that'll turn the flag on for relaunching. And now it's going to automatically relaunch. So I've got a couple waypoints set up here. There's nav one over there. So let me get that. Copy the clipboard. 
So now I'm going to talk to the nav and I'm going to say, I want to be within distance 10 of it and go to waypoint and paste. I'll hit run. So now it's going to go to that waypoint. And now it's done. Now I'm going to change the waypoint, go to waypoint two. And I'm also going to turn on some debugging stuff so that you can see some of what's going on here, because this gets interesting. Replace that GPS. Make sure that's readable. All right, so before I give it that command, I'm going to go to info, turn on the sensor range, and make sure my sensors are showing HUD so they show. And then also Alt F11 and debug draw. That'll turn on debug drawing for the cameras. All right, so now let's go back, run that command to go to GPS2, and there we go, if I type it correctly. So now we'll see that it's going to did a collision detect, and it got a collision. It's also using the sensor and scanning ahead to make sure it's not going to hit anything. So it just avoided that asteroid, and now it's going around it. It's automatically calculating the speed to go based on the physics. So now we're within the range of that. So now if we go back to navigation, da, 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 copy this. I'm actually going to add this, W paste semicolon so now it's going to go to one and then two so now we're going to go back to one we look forward collision detect avoidance so it's avoiding that asteroid by getting the bounty box and going around it and then it's going to turn to the point and go to that one and then when it gets there it's going to turn to the first the second waypoint that we set Collision detect, yes, go around. So that one command is doing multiple. And our fuel is getting lower, as you can see in the bottom right. We're down to 78%. And now we're done. So if you look at it, you'll see that we are in mode 6999, which means arrive target. We've done all the stuff we needed to do. Now, one other thing is that I have set up GPSs way far away. So there's one next to the asteroid. So I'm gonna change it to that. So let us, oh, did I copy that? Maybe not copy. And go into commands here, waypoint, paste, run. So now it's gonna go to that waypoint which is way far over there see it's eight kilometers now what's going on is it's getting up to speed and then it stops accelerating the front thrusters are turned off so it's not going to slow down but it's also not burning the forward thrusters so if we go look at the forwards they're not over in it's just coasting so we're going at maximum speed or, or the speed we set which in this case is the maximum it's not currently using fuel to travel, unlike Keen's autopilot. It's also doing collision detection. So it's got the sensor set up to go at the maximum range, and it's also doing raycasts to make sure it's not going to run into anything. So this actually isn't using fuel right now. We're just traveling. So you can actually go pretty long distances um, without using a lot of fuel. So I might fast forward a bit here because this is getting a little boring. Boring, boring, boring. Put my microphone the back up. Uh, now we're 600 away. And we're going to go right in here. 
and here we are. So what I can do now is I'm going to go back here and paste in that other command I had. And now I already deleted it. Never mind. All right, so that's the first. All right, so let's go back to Wicker Roll 1, copy A, W space, paste. So now we'll go back to the number one, run. And here we go. Again, we're using a little fuel to accelerate. Now we're down to 65. So it didn't take us down that much to get up to speed. Of course, this is a very light craft. It also doesn't have much fuel on board. And now we're coasting. And again, doing the collision detection as we go. And we're finally getting close. You'll see it stops recasting and just uses the sensor once we get in range. All right, so now we're only down to 62% for traveling, what was that, 7, 8K, 8.5K? Okay, so one other thing we can do is the patrol command. So let me show you that. So in the remote here, I've set up two waypoints from the system, just added them in order. You can set the speed limit, so I'm going to set that at, uh, we'll say, 50, and it will use that speed limit. And if I say Auto Patrol, since I just arrived and it's 699, it'll start. But I'm going to start off with 10, for I want to be within 10 of those, and then Patrol, and it's going to run a patrol. So it's going to the waypoints that are in the remote control. It was already at one, so now it's going to two. Forward mode. And it's going to be using a bit more fuel because it has to start, stop, start, stop. And it didn't restart the patrol, but we can turn that on with auto patrol. And now it's going to restart. And it will keep restarting. And I have relaunch off right now. So it won't relaunch once it docks. But we're going to go through this until it runs out of fuel. And then it's going to automatically dock. So we're just going to sit here and enjoy. Isn't this exciting? And I believe the auto dock is, uh, the fuel is set to 25 percent uh, is what it's going to automatically dock at. So here we go, round and round. And we could also patrol to that far location, um, and it would actually probably use just about as much fuel as this does, um, because it's going to coast the whole way once it gets up to speed. Actually, this avoidance causes it to have to go and then stop and then go again and then stop. So there's double the fuel usage pretty much. Which is actually what I want, because I want to show it running out of fuel. Fast forward a little here, so round and round it goes because we've got to get down to 25. So 
let's go 2x or something. So there's 25, so now it's going to go dock. So it's the same sequence. It's going to go to the front of the connector, and it's using navigation, so it has all the collision detection. So now it's going to turn towards the entry point for the, the place in front. And the base is telling it where to go for an entry, and it's pretty much just in front of the connector is where it wants to go. It wouldn't have to be there. So then it got the dock connector that it wants to go to and the alignment point. Now it's going to that alignment point, getting closer, and then it's going to reverse the thrust, the uh, connector. So it aims the connector at the connector, no matter which side it's on pretty much. And now it's doing a slow approach. And then it will lock. Notice it should also turn off the thrusters when it gets there. Stupid. Wow. Can't see. There we go. So thrusters are off. And it's going to reload. I believe I have relaunch off. But we'll see. So that'll get to 100%. And, oh, relaunch is on. So now it's relaunching. And it's going to go through the sequence again. And it will just keep doing this. Now, of course, if the base runs out of hydrogen, it won't be able to refuel, and it will never relaunch. But, otherwise, it'll keep doing it. And, now rinse, repeat. So, command here to go back to idle. Set mode zero. So that resets it. Now it's not doing anything. It's under manual control. So, I can now say go dock. Uh, well, first I'm going to turn off relaunch. It tells me that it's now false. And go dock. So it's going to find the nearest base. There can be multiple. But it's going to go find it. out of the ship here so we can sit and not get bumped out of our camera view. All right, so there it is. That's the Super Nevin Dock, and I call it Super really, but it's really kind of the functionality I had before in the Nav before, but now it's all nice and pretty. And this is space only right now. I haven't really tested this again on planets. Uh, the last Nav had planets, which actually I'm using for the drones from Escape from Mars. That's where the drones move, is using my Nav, uh, but I haven't tested on planets yet, so I'll have to move that stuff over to it. And the source code is available if you want to look at that and talk on the Discord about it. All right, that is it.